We're talking about the sleeper pick from ESPN, and they pick Amari Nyblack, the Alabama transfer tight end. Their description is, quote, normally a highly touted recruit who transfers from Alabama to Texas doesn't quite uh, qualify as a sleeper, but Nyblack hasn't quite had his breakout yet. The 6'4", 231-pound tight end arrives in Austin after catching 21 passes in two seasons with the Crimson Tide, and he could be a key feature in a passing game that lost tight end Jatavion Sanders, who caught 99 passes for 1295 yards and seven touchdowns the past two seasons. And yeah. quote. So before I ask you for your sleeper pick, Buck, your thoughts on the Amari Nyblack, the Bama transfer tight end, potentially being a big piece of this offense. Well, I, I think it's a great opportunity for Sark to to get a get a, a a young tight end who has caught a bunch of balls at Alabama. Not some guy that's caught four balls and he's looking to go elsewhere. I mean, he was you know, anything over 20, you got to be able to use that guy. That means he's a pretty decent player if he's caught that many balls. So I, I can see him being a pretty effective effective guy, especially in that slot area, big tight end. I mean, I don't know what his run blocking's like, but his, obviously his pass catching ability, you know, at, at that weight. He's not a 270-pounder. I mean, he's 230, so he can move up and down the field and get into some into some seams and can be effective. I, I don't know how much they're going to use him because I think they have another wide receiver. The big kid, the big freshman, almost fits that that mold a little bit, you know, in the slot, a little motion with him and do the same thing because I know what that cat can do. Yeah. I know he's got the ability to catch more than 21 passes, even as a true freshman. He's Talking a guy about Ryan can, Ringo. I don't know how much they use I don't know how much they use him. If he's good, they'll use him a lot. If he's so so, they'll get Wingo and he'll do the same things that you do as a tight end. They'll just move him around and make him feel like a wide receiver. You know what I'm saying? He'll yeah. think he's a wide receiver, but he's running a bunch of tight end routes through the slot because he's so damn big and so physical. So I I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how they use this kid. I think Amari and I Black. If they use yeah. him at all. If he catches 20-some passes, that's fine. That's yeah, good. He caught, that's, he caught 20 balls last season at Alabama yeah. for 327 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, that give article me 15, was give me 15 catches with him. I'm good. I hope it's more than that, but you know, I don't know. I don't know who the starting tight end for this football team is going to be, right? Obviously, JT Sanders is gone. You bring Amari Nye Black in. He was the top rated transfer tight end in the portal this yep. offseason. So, you know, Texas was looking for an addition. They did about as good as they could have done, but you've got Gunnar Helm. A tight end from there from Alabama before that didn't, you know. Right, yeah, Jaleel Billingsley. I yeah. mean, he didn't do anything. And that guy, we had seen him in, in big-time games play, and he got here, and he did nothing. Uh, he couldn't stay out of trouble off the yeah. field, too. So his uh, tenure here in Austin was pretty short-lived. Yeah, and if you've got, um, if you got a – to me, if you've got a freshman that's got a big body like the kid they have now, if he can do all those things – but you're not going to waste anybody. If this kid can do it, he can do it. If he can't – then believe me, Sark will move move along. Yeah, that's that's what I wonder, right? Because like I go back and look at Sark's best offenses at Alabama, and he didn't use the tight ends that no. much. Now that's he okay. had. That's why he when had, you have a receiver like a big receiver like he has anyway, that I, that he has recruited, that's the number one receiver in the nation playing for you, and you can do those same things. Um, I'll be looking to that number one receiver in the nation who I've seen that guy. I, I saw him in a spring game. Look like a grown man, and he can do the same things a tight end can do, and he can run the same routes. And I can put him in motion. I can put him out wide, but I can also have him do. The, he's not going to. He's not going to block like a tight end. He's going to get thrown around, you know. But if this kid can do it all, then you've got it. Now you've got an extra weapon, just yeah. another guy in your arsenal. That's all. I don't see him catching forty-five balls. I don't think it's just Ryan Wingo. I think it's all of the receivers that Texas right. has. Right. Like Sark's offenses at Alabama. I mean, he had four first round receivers there, right? Like Jerry Judy and Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith and Henry. And they, all went the spot. they went in every area. They caught balls everywhere. Yeah. So that's that's why Sark didn't use the tight end that much, because his wide receiver room was just so damn good that it's like, well, I'm going to get these guys the ball. Like, hey, you tight ends are fine, but I got first round picks on the outside. I'm going to find a way to force feed these dudes as much as I can. And so I started, wonder, I wonder if that's what Texas does this year. It's not just Wingo. They got three transfer portal receivers. Like they got three guys from the portal. They've got Wingo. They've got Jonte Cook, who was a five star last year. So I don't know how much the tight ends 
are used in this passing game. Well, maybe that's what I'm trying to say more than anything. I don't know what what they are in this offense anyway. Huh. You know, I, I I don't have a I don't have I really don't have a clue what they mean in here. If I can get another wide receiver, as I said, the one that looks like a damn tight end, who runs like a receiver, catches like a receiver, makes things happen. Why am I going to use the tight end? So I don't know where the kid fit in, where he really fits in. Right. And and you know, JT Sanders was so good, like Sark had to use him. Uh, you know, five-star player, like the guy was productive every year he was here. Right. Um, it, it wouldn't have made sense to not make JT a big focal point of the offense. Hell, at times last year, you wanted Sanders to be more of a focal point for this well, offense. I've always wanted him to be more, but I didn't think he was ever really enough of it. And right. Then when, they, when they made him enough of it, he was hurt. Right. So now you don't have a guy who's that good. So if you didn't make a guy who was one of the best tight ends in the country – a massive focal point of the offense, sure. then I don't know. Like you've got Gunnar Helm back as well. He had 14 catches last year as the second string tight end for Texas. And they all seemed like important catches when he caught the ball. They were, hey, surprise, you didn't think about this guy. His wide ass open. He found a way to get open, and, and Sark schemed him open a lot of times. But to me, a lot of his catches were always kind of big catches because they were surprised. Look, surprise, nobody's wow. covering this guy. It was surprise, like, oh, this guy's on the field. That's what it was for me. It wasn't like, oh, hey, there's Gunnar Helm. Cool. Uh, you know, he had one well, touchdown he did, last year. He makes the catches. Hey, catch the ball. Well, he's got to be better. Like, someone's going to have to be more of a weapon at tight end for Texas this year. Like, Gunnar Helm had 14 they catches. The tie, if they're using the tight end that way. Right. Well, they're going to use the tight end, I, I think, enough to have more than 14 catches. Like, I, you know. JT had 45 last year. I don't think Nye Black or Helm is getting to 45. I don't think they're getting to 40. But I, I think one of those guys has to get more than 20, right? Well, somebody's got to have at least 20. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, Nye Black had 20 and Gunnar Helm had 14 last year. So whoever it is, it will make it their most productive season in college sure. football. But, yeah, I'm not expecting either of those guys to get, you know, 40-plus like Sanders did last year. I just think this will be a more, you know, run game, obviously. I also think the running backs will be a part of the passing game. We've seen that from Sark. Absolutely. And then wide receivers too. Like I just I think the tight ends will be utilized less uh this year. I hope they're utilized some and I hope one or both of those guys turns out to be a nice weapon for Texas. But I just I don't feel like Sark's going to prioritize yeah, my, my that. Sleeper is the kid coming from Houston. I, I know it's not a sleeper. He's been very effective, but he's my sleeper in this this offense this year. I think he's gonna be incredibly good. Okay. Matthew Golden. Yeah, I think he's I think that he's a veteran player. He's that guy, you know, you know, like Mitchell was last year. I mean, the dependable guy that's just when it's time, when it's a third and six, it's going to him. He's gonna catch that ball. He's gonna make that play. He's gonna make a difficult catch. You don't have to be perfect, you know, like last year. It doesn't have to be a perfectly thrown ball. He's just gonna make he's gonna make difficult catches, but he's gonna be dependable on easy catches. They're not gonna hit him in the face mask or whatever. He's just gonna make the catch. He seems like a veteran guy that can do those type of things. Sure. Well, we saw that firsthand last year because he had a yeah. great day against Texas, right? Seven catches, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. You're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff from him. And the Longhorns' close win down in H-Town. Uh, two years with the Cougs, 38 catches in each season. And he had 13 yeah. total touchdowns. So he's been a nice uh, red zone weapon and a nice playmaker uh, towards the goal line in his career. Yeah, I like that pick. And, and Matthew Golden, I think, has a shot to be the starting return man for this team and special teams because well, he was second team all big 12 as a punt returner last year. So uh, that's another element he could bring to the table. Um, I like that pick as a sleeper because it feels like everyone's talking about Isaiah bond and look, that guy was really good for Alabama last season. So yeah, he's just started to really come on to come into his own. You know, yeah. he really did. I mean, he's, he's probably on a, if, if he was a young player BK and he had, you know, and he had really started to develop, Earlier in his career, I would think of him as a 70, 80 catch guy in a year. Isaiah Bond? Yeah. yeah and he, he may be that. He may be that. He, he may, he's, he's probably to that point now. He had 48 catches for Bama last year. Yeah, he's Bama, probably to that point now. Bama had some struggles with their passing game early in the season. Oh, Remember, they, they, they flipped so quarterbacks quarterback. after the Texas game, and then they realized that, oh, no, maybe Texas is just good. Like Jalen Miller is also good. Maybe just Texas is good, and that's why right. they beat us. We didn't have to panic and uh, change quarterbacks to some scrubini. And they, they did do that, man. They did. They held pretty strong. 
Yeah, they made the playoff. That was the only loss they had until losing in overtime to the national champs. Now they got quite the quarterback now. Yeah, he's a stud. He's one of the favorites to win the Heisman this year. So, um, yeah, I'll go with the different receiver as my sleeper pick. I've been talking about this guy a lot, and I, I think he's going to be the leading receiver for the Longhorns this year. That's Silas Bolden, the Oregon State transfer. I, I've mentioned it. Like my, I've got a sister and brother-in-law who live in Corvallis, which is where Oregon State is. They both went to Texas, like they're Longhorn fans, but like they they go to a couple of OSU games. They watch the team, and because of that, like I, I watch the team more than most people who aren't Oregon State fans watch Oregon State. You I just love watch the Beavers sit up there at their at their big two meetings. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I'm a fan of Beaver, so that's a part of it too. You, you know, that's I'd watch even if even if I didn't have family up there. But look, <laughs> they, they were a good team last year, right? They had DJ Uyunglele as quarterback, and they were ranked in the top 20 for most of the year. Now, they got ransacked. They lost a bunch of players. Their coach went to Michigan oh, State. Yeah. They're not really in a conference anymore, so they're they're falling hard right now. Uh, but no, I, like Silas Bolden was the leading receiver on a very, very good football team. We just and haven't that, seen him yet. We, yeah, I mean, they called him the Beaver Joystick, right? The Human Joystick is a nickname that's been used nice. before. Like, this dude is small. It's 5'8", it's about 165, maybe soaking wet. Like, he, he might be smaller than Xavier Worthy was. But, hey, Xavier Worthy's size didn't bother him at Texas, no. did it? And Bolden's no. not that fast. But, man, short area quickness. That That's dude, what I like. Love that yeah. short area quickness. He's playing some catchy catch right now, though. So my only my only concern with Silas Bolden has to do with Steve Sarkeesian. Sark has to not be a dweeb here. He can't be a loser here. Here's what I mean. Okay. A lot of the wide receivers that Texas got this offseason, whether it was Ryan Wingo or some of the other freshmen or some of the transfer portal guys, they were here for spring football. Silas Bolden was not. He was finishing up classes. He was graduating from Oregon State. So right. he, he did not get here until after spring ball was over. Steve Sarkeesian cannot hold that against him. Oh, you I, mean like, oh, he's behind? We can't hear, oh, he's be, behind? That can't be one of those things because I – I know this dude is a top three receiver on the team. I, I know it because I've seen him play. Like, I'm excited about these other guys. And I don't know if Silas Bolden is number one. I think he's going to be the leading receiver for this team this year. But this cannot be like, oh, we're punishing this dude because he didn't get here early enough. So he's we're going to. He's, he's a little behind. We're going to ease him in. Like, you know, no. maybe by conference play, he'll be like a starter. But no, sorry. He doesn't get to play against Michigan because he wasn't here in March. No, get him the ball as quick as possible. If he, I have no reason to believe he's not going to be as good as he was last year. If he gets here and he's as good as he was last year, hell, hopefully he's even better. That dude needs to be on the field on the very sure. first play of the season for Texas on August 31st. Absolutely. Yeah. We're sitting here talking, wasting time with some tight end coming from somewhere with his 21 catches. No thanks. Give me that guy right there. I just, as long as Sark, I hate that I use the word dweeb because now people are going to like say, oh, BK's calling Sark a dweeb. No, I don't think Sark is a dweeb. He's smart. I don't think oh, he does stuff like that. that. The fairness to the others, screw them. I'm hey. sorry. They just, they're not as, hey, he's better than you are. Let's go. Your best players got to play. Absolutely. Hey. Doesn't matter how old they are. Doesn't matter where they no. came from. Doesn't matter their size. Whatever. This guy, 54 catches, 746 yards, 14 a catch, had five touchdowns. Also had two rushing touchdowns. He's a jet sweep guy. Maryland. If you're good enough, you're old enough. Yeah, there you go. No, we don't need R. Kelly references here. <laughs> we're having a good time. It's Friday. We're talking college football, and now you're making I'm not. Drake if jokes. Enough, if you're good enough, you're old enough, R. Kelly. All right, Drake. Come right. on, man. Josh Giddy. What are we doing over here, man? Get that guy, get that guy on the field and get the ball in his hands. Yeah. Oh, I've been saying that about the other guy, P. Bucky. Come on. <laughs> You're no more saying, P. Diddy. It's P. Bucky now. Hey, I've been wondering about the kid Cooks though, though, for now a year and a half now. And I, I heard so much about him as a high schooler. Why didn't he why doesn't he touch the ball? Who? Why John Tay Cook? enough Dante Cook who are you talking about yes. yes is he going to is he going to be 35 catches this year or is he going to be sparingly used well he is the leading returning wide receiver for Texas he had eight catches last year 
it just goes to show you how much Texas lost in that wide receiver room. So this is going to be the group I'm going to be watching. Who's going to be the one? They've got so much talent. They should be able to rotate guys more over the course of games and over the course of the year to keep guys fresh. Well, we don't great. care to see a rotation if a guy's got if a guy's got 15 catches in the game. It's not like we need to spread it out. If he's got 15, he can catch 22, right? No, yeah, that that bothered some Texas fans last year. Like how much Worthy Mitchell and Whittington were on the field I at mean, all the time. I'm like, but do, do you see what our record is? Like, what, how are we so spoiled? We even had a year like this. Since 2009, you're complaining somebody that our, our best players? Breaker. Doesn't somebody have to be a record breaker in catches? Records are meant to be broken. I think our, our best players are playing too much. They're not getting yeah. hurt, but they're playing too much, and we're mad about that? That's that way. I just know, knew that they had so many high hopes for their, for Cooks that I'm like, so they, they, they really want – well, he's not – I mean, eight catches, it just didn't seem like hmm. enough catches for a guy you had. Okay, well, this is his year to me. Here yeah. it is. I think I think he's going to be in the mix too, right? Like I, we we have no idea what the rotation's going to look like. We might get some insight during fall camp, which right. starts here in a few weeks. Uh, but we might have to wait until game one to really see. Hell, it might be game two. I mean, you're 35 point favorites against Colorado State. You you should be able to have a pretty healthy rotation in yeah, that. Everybody game. should have a blast. Yeah. But, but Michigan, you know, it could be a one possession game late in the fourth quarter. Okay, who's going to be on the field? Who does Steve Sarkeesian trust the most? Yeah, you'll find out in game two who who he believes in by then. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, that's that's a huge one. Goes without saying. So um, yeah. All right. I like that. So we're both going with uh, offensive players. We're both going with wide receivers as our sleeper picks.